Live from downtown Vancouver at the Vancouver Film School campus, it's time for EP Live. Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. And we have a very cool show for you guys today. It is another episode of EP Live, which we film live and in person in a live space called the VFS Cafe, which is at 390 West Hastings in Vancouver, BC. It's right downtown. And this close proximity to being downtown and close to one of the biggest film schools on earth uh, allows us all kinds of access to fantastic guests. We've got one of those for you today. His name is Mike Makarovich, and he is uh, one of the lead animators, one of the veteran animators that has worked in, uh, at Pixar. He's worked on tons of stuff, and he's going to tell us all about it, and he is currently working on Toy Story 4, which I am so excited to talk to him about. Uh, we've got a rundown to get to, though, first, and this one is dedicated to Blair Farrell, who yesterday gave us a fantastic buried treasure with uh, Spider-Man uh, Shattered Dimensions on the DS. Excellent choice. Blair, thank you so much. Remember, all of you EPN members, you can send us any uh, videos of your buried treasures. Just let us know. Um, I put a comment up on our YouTube channel, so just check there. Uh, address to the EPN members. Thank you for your support, and thank you, Blair. This rundown is all yours. Now, if you thought Super Smash Bros. Ultimate had too much content already, get a load of this. Nintendo has released the new fighter Joker and the version 3.0 update for their massive fighting game. Joker hails from the Persona series and comes with an assortment of knives, guns, and a grappling hook, as well as the ability to summon his more powerful assist, Arsene. He's the first of five DLC fighters coming as part of the game's season pass, so you'll need to spend some money to get him, although the rest of the content in the new version 3.0 update is free for all players. The biggest addition is the rumored stage builder mode, where players can create and share their very own stages. A built-in video editor is also included in the update. This is the game that just keeps on giving. It's ridiculous how much stuff is packed into this thing. Uh, I did uh, try to get Joker onto my machine so we could play a little bit of that and that character today, but uh, uh, no dice. It happens, I think, just as we are uh, going to conclude this episode of EP Live. But very exciting. I got the season pass. We'll take a look at all of those fighters as if I have found every single fighter in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is is a game you kind of give your life over to. Um, Nintendo did not scrimp on all kinds of uh, wonderful additions and lots of fan service in this game. And I know tons of Persona fans out there looking at you, Johnny Millennium, who is on vacation, not watching YouTube videos in Hawaii right now. Right, Johnny? Don't watch YouTube. Enjoy the sun. All right, let's move on. The PlayStation 5 isn't the only new console on the way. Yesterday, just a few hours after Sony dropped the first details on their next-gen PlayStation, Rival Microsoft officially unveiled their long-rumored diskless version of the Xbox One. It's called the Xbox One S All Digital Edition, and as expected, removes the disk drive from the existing Xbox One S, S this is getting hard to say, uh, to give users a cheaper alternative. It's 50 bucks cheaper. Uh, that can only play games digitally. It will also come with three games pre-installed, Forza Horizon 3, Sea of Thieves, and Minecraft, but the hard drive is just as big as the existing S, one terabyte, so hopefully it doesn't get filled up too quickly. It hits stores on May 7th, and I do think that this is a good idea. I think that we are moving uh, closer and closer to that discless future, and I know all the fans out there, physical media, are saying, no, just like they added Vader in uh, the Star Wars movies, no. Uh, but I think it's inevitable. I think that uh, we, we want to be able to digitally access all of this content, and we want it to be ever-present for us, and before we know it, it's all going to be able to be streamed, and uh, we're going to be playing games in real-time streaming to our machines that we're just uh, connected to via a uh, subscription service. And Microsoft is, is vying for that as well. Um, so yes, it's an inevitable step for Microsoft. It's also a way for them to kind of uh, test the market and see what kind of an adoption rate they have with this thing. I think it's pretty exciting that they're adding games to the hard drive. I don't think these three games are particularly that amazing to add as an incentive, but you know, it would easily spend uh, 60, 75 bucks or something like that to get all of these games. Uh, if you wanted to pick them up and, and buy them. So you're saving something there, and it's, you know, it's great that 
we're getting pack-in games. I guess that will be the new incentive when, when we go fully digital is they will, co they will come with games again. Because remember, when we used to buy consoles back in the day, they all came with games. They don't do that anymore. But this is, uh, uh, you know, it's a nice little gimme from, uh, from Microsoft. I'm very interested to hear what you think, though. Let us know in uh, uh, the stream or in the comments if you watch this as an archive. Are you guys psyched for our all-digital future? And do you think Microsoft's going to have a hit here with the, uh, the digital edition of the Xbox One S? Uh, now, that's not the only Microsoft news. The new uh, version of Microsoft's most famous video game character has been unmasked. The upcoming Halo TV series has found its master chief. Showtime has announced that the iconic video game character will be played by Canadian actor Pablo Schreiber, best known for his role as Mad Sweeney in American Gods. I haven't watched that show yet. I really want to. He'll be playing John 117, the same master chief from the games, although it's unclear how much of him we'll be seeing without the helmet. We do know that, like the games, the show will chronicle humanity's battle for survival against the uh, deadly alien covenant, with Microsoft and 343 Industries working closely with the network. Filming begins this fall, and Microsoft and the, uh, the studios that are involved with this cannot drop the ball. I think it would be a great move on their part if they gave us uh, this actor in the games as well and sort of tied it all so that there was this familiarity and all of that built-in kind of co-branding and marketing and, you know, the, the push-pull of it all, I think, it would just be genius. I know that's a lot to, you know, to bite off and lots of rights issues that they'd have to deal with. Uh, but if the guy is fit for the role, and clearly, you know, Spielberg's involved with his television show, so uh, clearly there's a lot of muscle behind the production here, and Microsoft and 343 know it can't be crap. It has to be really good. It has to be a prestige show. So if this guy is who they're betting on, I feel like, why wouldn't you want to put him into the, into the games as well, so we're all familiar with it? And that's one of the things that I've been missing from the Halo games. They've, they've made a lot of them, and I've just wanted to get deeper into the lore, deeper into who this character is. Why do we care about him, apart from the fact that he's terribly badass and can kill a lot of aliens? <laughs> all right, now with Game of Thrones coming to an end, Netflix is rushing in to cash in on the dark fantasy market. Netflix has announced that their new Witcher series, another video game TV show kind of, uh, starring Henry Cavill will debut this fall. It's currently shooting in Hungary, and like the Witcher books and games, will fo we'll focus on the superhuman Geralt of Rivia, who uses his supernatural powers to take on even more powerful monsters. Judging by the promo material that's been released so far, Netflix is clearly hoping that this will be their answer to Game of Thrones. Chief Content Officer at Netflix, Ted Sarandos, also points out that both the books and the games have international popularity, particularly in Eastern Europe, where the franchise was born, and it also happens to be a market that Netflix wants to get a bigger foothold in. So the, the mystery widens there. You know, it makes sense for Netflix to kind of uh, think internationally with its productions. I know that uh, Henry Cavill is very fired up to take this role. He was talking about his love for video games and specifically this character, uh, you know, I think when he was still in the super suit. So I think he uh, is itching to do something very cool with this show. And again, Netflix can't really drop the ball here. It has to be great. There's so much pressure to turn some of these video game properties, some of these characters that we love from this medium into something that really resonates, almost like what the comic industry has been able to do with all the superhero movies out there. And, and who knows who's gonna be the first one to really nail that. I don't think it's gonna be that Sonic the Hedgehog movie, but we don't know, we don't know. Maybe it's Detective Pikachu. I think there's a lot of excitement for that movie. Uh, I'd like to see Detective Pikachu take on Henry Cavill as the as the Geralta Rivia. That'd be a good movie. That'd be fun, right? Yeah? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> All right, well, I am excited to see this. Um, I, I wasn't excited by the, the photos that we saw of uh, Henry Cavill and in in all the, the wig and the accoutrements, but uh, we'll see. It could, be really, it could be really fun, and definitely there's going to be a big, big absence when uh, Game of Thrones leaves the airwaves.